this is again an experiment first, expect practical results later kind of an instrument. But you will notice if you wanted to set up something very classic or very simple, you might feel like, wait a minute, I'm completely limited. If I want to have four oscillators coming out of output one, that doesn't seem possible right now. I can take oscillator one, I can take oscillator two, but I run out of slots. And yeah, I could use the second one for numbers three and four, but maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to save this for something else, or maybe I wanted to do something different with oscillator two uh, before running it into here. Maybe in this case with oscillator two, I wanted to uh, you know, run it into uh, a filter first and then use output two for that. So how could I combine, for example, you know, four oscillators and have them all going into just one single input. And that's where you get into like the mixer section. With reactor blocks, the mixers were very much what you expected to see, right? It had your four different input slots. You could adjust the level accordingly. And we have the same sort of thing here inside of um, Bodzilla. If you go and look at the bottom, and here they call it the multiplex, but this is really just a very, very complex mixer that gives you a lot of control and flexibility over the sound. So we have basically four independent mixers and you'd under you'll understand why that's useful kind of later on but let's just go through a really quick example because i think once you see this you'll really just understand how this instrument works so we take oscillator one and we know that we can run that straight into the output if we want but i can also use the mixer okay and so i'm going to go down here and use just this first one and then I take the output of the mixer and run that into the main output, and it's going to sound identical. Only here I get another level of volume control. So the one thing that is limiting, but not really, because you can always bypass it if you get creative, is that if I take oscillator 2 and I bring that in here, and let's go and let's adjust this and put it 12 semitones up an octave higher and this is currently just a sine wave we can make it a saw wave these levels are obviously coming down together if i go into the other side right i can get more mix of that higher one if i want it So obviously this can be taken a step further. I could take the output of oscillator three. I could run that into this third slot and then take the output of oscillator four, run that into this slot here, and then obviously make adjustments. So I could bring one up by 12. Again, we'll get something kind of like a sign. Maybe this time we'll add a little fractalization in. So very, very powerful, right? And now we are just using that one input slot. And if we wanted to have, you know, additional control over, say, oscillator three, or we wanted that to be out on its own, we could take this and we could bring it into output two. and do something like that. So you're really not limited, or we could even use a whole nother section of the multiplex here if we want to take one version of this and run it through a filter and leave the other one unfiltered. We could very easily do that um, just by going in here, kind of repatching all these cables up and then taking the output, running that into one of these filters first, and then taking and choosing which filter we want, taking that output and sticking it into the input. So a uh, very, very intuitive.
Oh, I lost the other one. I must have unplugged it, so. There we go. So this is a really rich, really dense engine, and that's why it, it, it's useful for such great sounds. And that's the thing to always be aware of is that all of these instruments can look the same or have the same feature set, but depending on how they're coded, that's really what ends up getting you, um, you know, the richness and the actual timbre of the instrument. And just to show you, we can take this further and go in here and add more voices. And you can see we have voice stacking. So this takes up a lot of CPU, but it can get you some really rich, um, amazing sounds. So let's go and let's up the voices here all the way to 16 and let's put some stack onto this guy. So we're going to stack uh, three instances on top and then we can do a little bit of detuning here. So let's listen to how rich this is just now. And let's just make it very slight. Let's go back and stack just two. Sounds like we're losing the one. There we go. on the delay. And this is all without even using a filter. And again, I just can't help myself but to just keep on experimenting. And you can just see, I mean, it's it's an instrument that is capable of great sounds with doing very, very little. No filter, just combining all of our oscillators together, few changes, there's not even any modulation really happening. And, um, you know, just, just <laughs> it's so hard for me to make these videos and not go off topic, but I think I'm gonna leave it all in there because that's what modular is I think all about. And if you see someone like me who's been doing this for a pretty long time, just get immersed in it each and every time. I mean, I hope that that is, um, at least for some of you, maybe inspiring and, and is something that can get you really into this as well.